Hi, my name is Shannon Healy. I'm currently a sophomore at Emory University studying anthropology and predictive health. Today I'll be presenting on Allium sativum and the Amaryllidaceae family, more commonly known as garlic. Garlic is known today mostly for its culinary role, however it is thought to have significant cardioprotective antioxidant and broad spectrum antimicrobial effects. There has been an extensive amount of research done, however there are contradictory results and this is likely due to the many manipulations of garlic to make it more consumer friendly that change the active constituents and also don't consider the synergistic effects of garlic in its natural form. Um, a quick botanical description. Garlic is mostly cultivated in China, so while Gilroy, California claims it is the garlic capital of the world, almost 80% of the cultivation is done in China, and America as a whole cultivates less than 2% of the world's supply. It is a perennial plant that grows best in mild climates, and it has flat leaves that grow up to two feet in length. There are two subspecies within Allium sativum. There's Allium sativum of Fioscorodon, also known as hardnet garlic, and Allium sativum sativum, also known as softnet garlic. So hardnet garlic is composed of an underground bulb with six to 11 cloves, all circling around a central hard stalk. And this stalk grows and curls at the top in what is known as a scape. And normally after two to three curls, the scape is cut so that the plant's energy can go towards forming the underground bulb. But if it were to continue growing, as you can see in the top picture, it would form a bulbous, which is essentially a group of miniature cloves that would eventually flower. However, um, these flowers are sterile and there is no pollinator. Softnet garlic is composed of 24 cloves that are layered with the largest ones on the outside. Now most studies don't specify which subspecies is used, although most are thought to be softnet garlic since it is more common, um, but no matter which one is used, they are thought to have similar properties. Traditionally, garlic has been used for heart disease, abnormal growths, infections, and colds, among other uses. It's mentioned 23 times in Dematuria medica, specifically for its role in cleaning the arteries, which is interesting because today it's being investigated for its role in atherosclerosis, which is known as hardening of the arteries. Um, it was also known as Russian penicillin during both world wars because it was given to soldiers to treat gangrene and other infections. Because of its high vitamin C content, the Cherokees used it to treat scurvy, and Egyptian slaves were also also given garlic to give them strength to build the pyramids, and cloves were also found in King Tut's tomb, although the specific use is not indicated. While we, uh, while we widely recognize garlic for its culinary use, it wasn't widely used in cuisine until the 20th century, and up until that point it was mainly used in the lower classes because the resulting garlic breath wasn't thought to be appropriate for the higher classes. Um, in the Far East, it w the use was prohibited by monks, widows, and youth because um, it was thought to be an aphrodisiac. Now spiritually, we all know the reference in pop culture today that garlic is a way to ward off vampires. Um, it's also mentioned in the Bible that the Jews missed it when they left Egypt. There are also some satanic references. An ancient Islamic myth is that when Satan left the Garden of Eden, um, from his left footprint garlic grew and from his right footprint onion grew. There's also another myth that suggests that garlic originated from the blood of Satan. In Greece, midwives used it to protect infants from evil eye at births and also advised mothers to sew it into their clothing as a way of continued protection. Garlic is composed of allicin, or allen and allinase, and when it's chewed or chopped or crushed in any sort, this forms allicin, which is a form of an organosulfur compound. Um, this is highly unstable, and after 30 seconds, 97% of the reaction is complete when it's exposed to oxygen that turns it into different forms of diallyl sulfides, and these different forms can be seen in the diagram. These diallyl sulfides are responsible for the very pungent flavor and taste, and also thought to be responsible for many of the medicinal properties that we'll get into. Um, many consumers are not a fan of the very pungent taste, so it's been manipulated to make it more consumer friendly. One way of doing this is heating it, and you may be uh, familiar with the taste when you heat it, it mellows out, and this is because it just, the heat destroys alanase so that it cannot react with alan and form these organosulfur compounds. It can also be dehydrated to form powders, so when you remove the water, it also separates alan and alanase, and then when you add water again, they're able to react. However, this does decrease the content from raw garlic. You can also age garlic by soaking it in ethanol and extracting and concentrating the compounds. When you do this, the main compound is s alcysteine which is significant because this can pass through the GI tract and is stable in the blood, whereas allicin is not. 
Biologically, overall, it is thought to be cardioprotective. Um, most of the studies that were done were done in rats. It's been shown to be an anticoagulant, so to inhibit platelet aggregation, which is significant in the study of atherosclerosis. Um, it has also been shown to reduce blood cholesterol, specifically low-density lipoproteins or bad cholesterol. Um, Adjuene has been found shown to be an antithrombotic, which is one of the organosulfur compounds. Hydrogen sulfide also acts as a vasodilator, but it's important to note that this is only present in freshly crushed garlic. So even if it's fresh garlic, but you bought it at the store pre-cut, it's not going to have the beneficial effects of hydrogen sulfide. Um, there, there is a lot of anti-cancer activity and anti-inflammatory activity. In one study using human um, cells that had cancer, so leukemic cells, it was found that adjuvine arrested the cell cycle of only cancer cells and not healthy cells. It has also been shown that garlic inhibits NF-kappa B activity, which controls DNA transcription. It's also important to note that one study found that a high single dose of these compounds did not have any anti-inflammatory activity, but low doses over time did, so this would suggest that there are benefits to consuming garlic as a regular part of the diet as a form of preventative medicine. Garlic also has effects as a broad-spectrum antimicrobial. Um, it has been shown to be bacteriostatic against salmonella. It's also been shown to act as an antifungal. Um, Adjuene inhibits 98.2% of fungal growth um, in the case of yeast infections. Clinically, um, there are very different results. They're not very conclusive, and this is because as you saw, there are different forms of manipulating garlic, and even within that, there are different forms of doing so. So depending on how you dehydrate it or how you isolate the compounds, this changes the active constituents and hence the results. And it's also important to note that it's very difficult to conduct blind trials using raw garlic because it has a very pungent and recognizable taste and flavor. Um, but overall, aged garlic is, has been found to lower cholesterol and blood pressure. Um, and raw garlic, when you consume one clove a day um, over 26 weeks, it was shown to reduce cholesterol by 20% and thromboxane levels by 80%. Now, studies on hypolipidemia are not very conclusive because these often use um, powdered garlic in the form of capsules. And this, the adjuvine levels in this can greatly vary, so this is the least conclusive. Um, there are limited clinical recommendations for cancer. Um, animal studies do suggest that it is promising specifically in the treatment of blood cancers. However, there's not enough to go forth with clinical recommendations other than using it as a part of the regular diet for preventative medicine. It has been shown to decrease salivary microbial populations, so it was tested as a mouthwash and found to be effective. This is not thought to be successful commercially because most people would not enjoy the resulting taste and breath. Um, it is also shown to be effective as an antifungal against yeast infection and against athlete's foot. And this has been, in some studies, it's shown to boost the effectiveness of commonly prescribed medications. But in the case of athlete's foot, um, one of the compounds, adjuine, was found to actually be more effective than the commonly prescribed medication. <laughs> There are some contraindications. Um, allyl methyl sulfide is one of the compounds that cannot be digested, so it goes to the blood where it travels to the lungs and is emitted as garlic breath, known as haltosis. It can cause GI upset if you consume too much, most commonly in the form of flatulence or diarrhea. Because of its antiplatelet activities, it's recommended to avoid consuming garlic with other anticoagulants such as warfarin or aspirin and to avoid it two weeks before scheduled surgery or childbirth. It has been shown to decrease the effectiveness of certain HIV and AIDS medications. One study also found that um, consuming garlic can change how your body metabolizes estrogen, which has led to a lot of um, worry about whether or not it decreases the effectiveness of oral contraceptives, but more research is needed to go into this and there's nothing conclusive yet. Garlic can also cause severe burns, as seen in the picture. Um, this was a case of self-medication where a man had a fungal infection and chopped up garlic and applied it to his feet and tightly wrapped it. And as you can see, it resulted in very severe burns. Um, most of the cases where burns have been shown are because of self-medication. However, there have also been cases of severe burns due to self-mutilation. 
Currently, garlic is sold in supplements over the counter. It can um, it is important to note though that the essential oils in aged garlic are often minimal because these are responsible for the very strong taste and smell that consumers are not very fond of, but these are also responsible for many of the beneficial effects, so you might not be getting these. If you're considering taking dehydrated garlic in pill form, it's important to look for an enteric coating because alanase is, um, alanase is deactivated by the acidic environment of the stomach. Overall, though, it's thought that if you just consume one to two cloves of garlic per day, whether as a part of the diet or some people just swallow them whole like pills, you'll see the recommended or you'll see the cardiovascular antioxidant and broad spectrum antimicrobial effects. So in conclusion, garlic has a long history of use as a food and a medicine, and many of the ancient uses have inspired current uses today. In general, it is thought to serve cardioprotective effects, antioxidant effects, and broad spectrum antimicrobial effects. And despite the extensive amount of research, there is a lack of conclusive results suggesting a need for studies that consider the different forms of garlic and how this changes the active constituents. Thank you.